One of the things I love about Rochester is that I can stand here and sign in front of an audience and you hear a woman's voice. That is not, that is a special case, but I have traveled across the country and around the world for my personal and professional life. And there have been certain situations where people have looked at me strangely because I have signed. And there have been countries where 10, 20, 30 people have laughed at me and jeered at me because they had never seen sign language before. But here in Rochester, we have the highest amount of people per capita than any city in the United States. Inside restaurants, waiters know sign language. I'm curious to know how many of you guys know sign language or maybe even just fingerspell. That's great, we're off to a good start. Here in Rochester, waiters take orders using American Sign Language. Doctors' offices are equipped with video phones that flash rather than ring, and the latest movies are shown with captions. <laughs> How often is it that deaf and hearing people work together and interact? I believe that there is strength and connection in relationships between hearing and deaf people, and it can improve in the community and it'll show other communi communities around the world. Okay. Deaf people in other places don't have the same opportunity we have here in Rochester. I was talking with a mother who's deaf from Massachusetts and she has two hearing sons and they moved to Rochester but before that when they lived in Massachusetts they had a parent teacher conference and she had to ask the school to bring her an interpreter and then she moved here from Massachusetts and her son had a medical emergency so the mom rushed to the school and she opened the door and she saw an interpreter sitting there waiting for her. And she thought that she would have to have the school call an interpreter, but that is Rochester, easily accessible. It's often that, oh, in New Zealand, they have a different kind of sign language. There is one interpreter for every 100 deaf signers. So if you wanted to go to a doctor's office or you wanted to go to a college course and take a class, you would have to wait a very long time. But here we're lucky because we can have an ASL interpreter within that same day. And it would be hearing and deaf people it is easily accessible for both and i am talking to you and not even using my voice or any voice for that matter 95 percent of deaf people deaf children are born to hearing parents But a place where people are kind of unsure about, they think every day, they had never seen a deaf person before. So why, why keep that child? It's hard to imagine that child for them growing up and caring for themselves and being a member of society. So they tend to think that the child will just go back to their family. I spent one month in India with a group of children aged 6 to 16 and some of them were abandoned by their families because they were deaf. Then I flew to Tanzania where I was informed that the deaf children were sometimes thrown in a chicken coop and they were looked down upon. Sometimes the deaf babies were left in the woods or they were left in a ditch to die. And it 
wasn't surprising that 90% of those countries were developed, but they didn't see that those children wouldn't have the opportunity for an education. They don't know how to read. They don't know how to write. They wouldn't learn those basic human rights and deaf people have basic human rights. And how once they need to have an equal opportunity, same as hearing people, and not be looked down upon or judged for that. And that is still a problem in some deaf people's lives around the world. And it shouldn't be. But that's not the case in Rochester. I believe that what we do here can have a global impact and spread to other communities and, and other places around the world because Rochester is a place for many people to come for businesses, for school, for travel. And some people see Rochester and say, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Yes, it is possible for deaf and hearing. Deaf are able and they can work together with hearing people. And, and that is the belief and that is the concept that those people need to take back home. Normally, deaf people, but that is the bridge, and that should be the same deaf and hearing people, and it is important to understand that. We're not mute. We are not deaf and dumb. We are a culture, culturally deaf, which means the capital uppercase D. I'm not disabled. We're not disabled with our own culture. We have our own language. We have our own story, our own art, our own traditions, and our own values that we all share. We actually want to be deaf. And I know that's hard concept for hearing people to understand, but we want to be deaf. Why do I feel like, why do people feel like deaf people are frowned upon? Why they are less than? And some people call that hearing loss, but we deaf people call it deaf gain. sign language to learn different signs. Basic human rights for deaf people, sign language is just like English is a basic human right for hearing people. So for all of those around the world, Rochester, and Rochester is very famous for many different things like Xerox and, and it's also known to house a lot of deaf people, yes. But more than often, people realize that deaf people tend to attract and engage in community. And it's very open in general. If you start learning about deaf culture and sign language, if we all understand each other, we'll all start to build that community. And it's true with any culture, not just deaf culture. Back in the 1950s, Martha's Vineyard was a very, very, very popular place. And that would be a place where a lot of deaf people and hearing people both knew sign language. And they would sign from far away across the room or across the hall or wherever they were, where they couldn't hear each other. Parents that had children, babies that were sleeping, they would use sign language so they wouldn't wake that child up. And then now 100 years later, who used to be deaf, it was hard to figure out who was deaf because they all signed the same. And then the sign language disintegrated in that area. And we need to now build a more accessible society for those deaf people to picture that universal design for that. But what does it look like? It, I mean, it makes sense that people in the environment tends to stop that. But we have to remember 
that persons with disabilities shall be entitled to recognition and support of their specific cultural and linguistic identity, including sign languages and deaf culture. while ago there's there's story i want to it's not a popular belief or be eager to learn about the culture or sign language but at the same time the deaf have to be able and ready to share with their experiences so the hearing need to be ready to learn and the deaf need to be ready to share so they could bridge that gap and show that the world that we're not deaf people are not disabled we need to be a connected community now nowadays i hear hearing people type on their computer send an email or text or be on their phone the same time they're having a conversation but then that personal relationship is lost but then ASL, signing, it requires that personal relationship. It demands that personal relationship. There, ASL uses concepts that expresses emotions in certain ways that's more visual. And you see people sometimes express their facial expression and their body language. And this is an example. Deaf culture values personal connection, something we can integrate into the Rochester community at large. Children that are left on the streets in India, the kids in the chicken coop are our neighbors. I believe that the concept of the butterfly effect, and that means what? We, what we do here affects what happens there and where we share our connections with hearing and deaf that affects worldwide. So I encourage you hearing people go to deaf plays. Go to deaf plays. Take ASL class. Meet deaf friends and deaf people, you exchange your culture, exchange the experiences. It all starts by one day building those relationships and those, that foundation. And you'll realize that deaf culture is special and very diverse. If you build that bridge, that structural foundation of relationships, it's better for the deaf community, but it's also better for the world as a whole. So here at Rochester, around the world, we'll exchange hearing loss for everyone's gain. Thank you very much.